Today I'm going to be drawing the quintessential Dutch roundabout, which has bicycle paths with priority over motor traffic. This is not to be confused with any of the other roundabout designs which came out of the Netherlands, such as the turbo roundabout, the dumbbell roundabout, or the roundabout with bicycle paths that don't have priority over motor traffic. First I'll need a series of circles. The smallest circle is the central island of the roundabout. It can be pretty much any size, but smaller circles will require a concrete runover pad for large vehicles. I'm going to use a 10 meter radius for the island and add in a 2 meter concrete runover pad. The following ring is the circular roadway. It should be at least 4 meters wide to provide enough space for cars to turn. Next is the space between the bicycle path and the circular roadway. This should be from 5 to 6 meters wide to provide space for one car. If it were less than 5 meters wide, cars waiting to enter the circular roadway would be blocking the bicycle path, and cars waiting for a gap in bicycle and pedestrian traffic would be blocking the circular roadway. And if it's more than about 6 meters wide, the second car in line waiting to enter the circular roadway would be blocking the bicycle path. The final ring is the bicycle path itself, which should be at least 1.5 meters to meet minimum standards, or at least 2 meters to allow two people to ride side by side. Next I'll add the connecting roadways. These can be at any angle, and you can have any number of them and it should all work out in the end. I'm just going to draw three connecting roadways to keep the drawing pretty quick. Now I'm adding about a one meter median to prevent cars from going the wrong way around the roundabout. This median should be fairly narrow, otherwise it'll look like pedestrians are supposed to be waiting for a gap before crossing the roadway. Then I add the curves from the connecting roadway onto the circular roadway. This radius should be as small as possible to keep turning speeds low, which maximizes the likelihood of cars yielding to pedestrians and cyclists as they're expected to. I'm going to use a 6 meter radius here. This part is a bit of trial and error. I'm just trying to get it lined up so that the end of the curve is perpendicular to the bicycle path. At this point I'm also going to go ahead and outline the island between the bicycle path and the connecting roadway. Alright, now it's starting to look like a roundabout. But now there's a problem. Large vehicles like trucks and buses may not be able to make it around the tight curves I just drew. So I'm going to go over the curves again, this time with a larger 12 meter radius. The area between the two radii will be another concrete runover island. It would be raised enough to discourage car drivers from cutting the corner but smooth enough to allow trucks and buses to go over it without issue. Now I'll add in the roadway edges. I'm going to draw cycle tracks on two of the approaches and on-street bike lanes on the third. On the approach with on-street bike lanes, I need to remember to add in an extra 1.8 meters for the bike lane heading towards the roundabout. I don't need to do this for the bike lane heading away from the roundabout, as it will still be separated at that point. With the curbs in place, now I can draw in the crosswalks. I'll be using Ontario traffic markings because that's what I'm familiar with. With the crosswalk in place, I can continue the median on the other side of it. Now it's time to add in the bicycle paths. The paths heading towards the roundabout can just go straight and then rejoin the circular bicycle path with about a 4 meter radius. 
Pedestrians have priority at this roundabout, so the crosswalk continues across the bicycle path and there's no need for any waiting area between the bicycle path and the roadway. The bicycle paths heading away from the roundabout should diverge as early as possible to make it easier for drivers to tell whether a bicycle is continuing around the circle or going to leave the roundabout. Now it's just a matter of filling in the blanks to complete the shape of the bicycle paths. With the form of the roundabout complete, I can add in the sidewalks. I'm going to put them directly against the bicycle path on the streets with cycle tracks and uh, a setback with a boulevard on the street with on-street bike lanes. Finally, it's time for the road markings. In Ontario, we mark bicycle crossings with elephant's feet, which are squares alongside the crossing. But I'm actually just going to draw some lines because it's really hard to draw squares at this scale. Sharrows through the crossing also remind drivers of what kind of vehicle they're expected to yield to here. In Ontario, we've recently started using shark's teeth for yield markings. These triangular markings are the standard in the Netherlands and have been for a long time. There are three yield points for vehicles using the roundabout. Crossing pedestrians and bicycles when entering, turning onto the circular roadway, and crossing pedestrians and bicycles when exiting. Now I'll just add some color. There we go, now I've got a handy diagram to show the traffic department next time they tell me that the bicycle lanes need to suddenly end when approaching a roundabout. 